hello welcome back to the channel so in this video we'll be starting with another subject economy um, as we all know economy plays a vital role in both prelims and mains examination so around 15 to 20 questions comes in prelims and economy is a major part in the gs3 of the mains paper so we'll be dealing economy from both prelims and mains perspex, perspective so we'll deal topics slowly one by one hope you guys and understand the basics which will be very much useful for prelims and mains examinations so starting with today's lecture today we will be dealing with the basics of economics actually we will be dealing with uh, basics of economics into two in two lectures two different lectures um, as as this uh, basics of economics are, are quite big topic but uh, we should know this topic better to understand further topics so let's get into the basics of economics so first what all we will be looking into this video difference between economy and economics difference between macro micro and meso economics different approaches to study the economics different consensus and finally the different schools of economics these are all we'll be which we'll be looking into today's lecture so let's get into the topic so as we come into the examination process we must clearly remember that we are not reading economics but economy but to read economy and know economy it is better we knew some some things some facts or some theories about the economics so that is why we should know about the difference between economy and economics so economics is nothing but a branch of study a area of study which examines the communities to manage the scarce resources to the require to meet the requirements so we all know that the resources which we have are finite number and we do not have infinite number of resources so to match that to allocate them to a particular community or whatever it may be so economics is known as the science of scarcity as british economist lionel robbins says economy on the other hand denotes the connecting aspects of money resources and goods and services which bring three different elements into together that they are production distribution and consumption it encompasses the institutions regulations and processes which facilitates the economic transactions and connections so uh, to make it simpler economics is a study where we study about uh, the scarcity of resources uh, how the resources are allocated while economy on the other hand it deals with the nation uh, where elements such as production distribution and consumption takes place so now let's dig into the difference between macro micro and meso economics macroeconomics is nothing but an economics which plays a major role in the larger area such as at national level while dealing with broader aspects such as the gdp inflation unemployment in national income and economic growth it analyzes and uh, its performance is based on government policies monetary systems trade actually because those monetary system government policies they influence the growth and stability of the country so that is why macroeconomics plays the role at the major level microeconomics on the other hand it focuses on individual component of an economy such as supply and demand market structure allocation of resources consumer choice this shows microeconomics shows how the individual decisions and the interactions with the 
uh, the resource the component of economy impacts the resource and the distribution of goods and services for example uh, if the supply and demand of let's take an example of supply and demand of onion so how individual decisions and interactions impact so this is like let's see uh, the no the flow and uh, sup the supply and demand of onion is going normal one individual holds all the onion to increase the demand okay as the uh, demand increase the price also increases at the later at the later place because of which uh, the price increases the car consumers have to pay more money to buy the onion on the other hand let's say the supply is more supply is very much high but the demand is less the price eventually comes down this is something microeconomics takes into play mesoeconomics plays the economic analysis at the intermediate level which examines certain industries certain sectors such as industries example healthcare education infrastructure so it looks into the policies and challenges a particular sector which influences both individual businesses and the broader macroeconomic environment like uh, healthcare it looks into the curative uh, policies preventive policies what may medicine has been born into how it impacts the um, individuals and how it uh, affects the broader economic uh, national um, economy at the national level these things all look into the meso economics now let us look into the different approaches to study economics so we will be dealing with four different seven different type of economics approaches political economics keynesian economics gandhian economics developmental economics socialist economics capitalist economics and finally the mixed economy so let's deal it one by one so political economics so it's an interdisciplinary approach branch of social sciences which focuses on interrelationship of individuals governments and public policy so politics and economics come together here uh, which focuses on interrelationship of individuals governments and public policy so what it does is it will help in the areas such as fiscal policies cross domestic for food security global trade etc so um, the rise of globalism on a part uh, and the increase in the global trade means that the political economy of one country can impact both the economy and politics of others like um yes as the as a country increases its trade it not only affects other countries or the, i mean uh, influences other countries but also uh, sometimes it might help in the growth of the country to other countries too so another example which can be cited here is the land reforms in a country be it india or america united kingdom or wherever it may be can be a political de- decision but it also has impact on the economic situation of the country agriculture and the livelihood so next is the keynesian economics it advocates for the government intervention in economy to stabilize and stimulate the economic activity as particularly during the time of recession or depression we all know that economy is always not positive or always not negative in terms of growth but sometimes the recession or depression occurs during that phase it is expected that government should intervene um, which creates economic activity and uh, put the economy back on track for example um, indian government announced atmanirbhar package of around 20 lakh crore during the covid-19 it was announced to bring the economy back into track so this is something keynesian economics explains about next is gandhian economics 
it is based on the ideas of mahatma gandhi about the distribution and management of wealth so the idea of gandhi in economics is to build a self sufficient society where each community should be self reliant so in gandhian economics uh, the self policy of self reliance is something which is not at all po- possible in the current scenario so however still gandhian economics came up with such ideas next is developmental economics developmental economics is a branch of economics whose goal is to better the fiscal economic and social conditions of the economic country and focuses on factors such as health education working condition and market condition so a developmental economy not only focuses on economy but also about the social welfare of the people so it ha- it did emerge particularly after the post world war 2 era uh, to in response to challenges faced by the newly independent nations so developmental economics uh, like as you all know um, the new uh, countries must quite adapt to the changing scenario post world war 2 so developmental economics came into scene uh where they suggested fiscal economic and social conditions of de- developing countries to improve their scenario in the geopolitical stage so we saw these four different approaches study economics like political economics keynesian economics gandhian economics and developmental economics now we will be looking into the three important approaches first is the liberal economics so liberal economics is something like a branch of economics which mentions the state should limit itself only by providing services like infrastructure defense judiciary etc while that economy should be left to the market forces according to mass per the laissez faire approach united states australia switzerland are good examples of capitalist economics their government doesn't intervene into the um, uh, i mean economics uh, mostly so that is something capitalism speaks about we have features merits and demerits as well so in features private property individuals can hold private property land tools machinery everything for products uh, for, for their survival freedom of choice they have their own freedom of choice individual can carry out occupation or trade as per their wish uh, profit is the main motive yes profit is the main motive of capitalism government every producer main aim is to maximize the profit free competition uh, a government has no control over buyers and sellers choices so there is more free competition price mechanism as i said earlier it is um, influenced by the market forces not by the government role of government is very limited in equalities in income of course in equalities in income rise uh, is observed that the rich get richer and poor get poorer which increases the economic inequalities so coming to the merits of that more efficiency since the if you uh, idea is to produce or get more profit earn more profit more efficiency increases according to the demands of the customer consumers but the scope for innovation so again the profit motive comes into the place because uh, the more better the faster the delivery you give the more consumers will buy so scope, scope for innovation is always high so discourages from any form of a uh, discrimination uh, discrimination so the trade can happen between two parties without any barriers so consum- consumer satisfaction so capitalism's motive is ultimate goal is of producers particularly is the consumer satisfaction so they work whatever they can to make it happen savings ultimately leading to more investments for production um so when you have po- proper savings you can eventually reinvest in more cap- buying more la- um, more capital like land labor etc to put in more production and eventually increase your profit so next is the demerits 
capitalism leads to the de- inequalities in income so as more and more in um, um capital uh, capital is coming to the play only the cap- people who hold capital are getting richer and the people who hold poorer either stay in the same status or get lowing get low so since they produce to uh the high profit earning motive of a capitalist economy uh they use the resources in a way that the environmental problem sometime it occur which can destroy the natural balance so since the products is product sold uh, manufactured for the consumer some products are co- very much costly which cannot be used by normal medi- middle class consumer so what happens is the duplication of products of work uh, happens which again is a large wastage of resources the society is heavily stratified on income based on capitalists and workers next is so hope you guys are clear with liberal economics now let's deal with socialist economics so socialist economy is a branch of economics where the private property does not exist and the national economy is completely in the hands of government so it is an economy where producers and services are produced for use rather than profit example china and former ussr so in this socialist economy government own the means of production limited choice what is that limited choice like there is no competition the so government decides everything so co- consumers have very limited choice the price is determined by the government and not by market forces um reduction in income economic equal inequality because a uh, single person does not accumulate large amount of money as a result the gap between rich and poor has will shrink significantly so in socialist economics wealth distribution is a major goal not wealth production which is a major goal in capitalist economy next is maris as you said reduction in inequality is happen as exploitation of poor and resources by rich is not allowed there is no conflict between rich and poor as the state is classless socialist economics can offer accessible and affordable public services such as health care education social service for all its citizens without any discrimination because the ultimate control is by the, with the government central planning and government control can lead to the stable economic conditions and reduced economic fluctuations like when only one one branch of government is planning there is n- that is going to keep repeating or that is going to alter only with that even shall we the economic conditions and the re- economic le- fluctuations will get proper the so, demerits as there is no competition or profit eventually the innovation lacks due to the inefficiency corruption and favoritism the red tapeism of bureaucracy occurs market failures like socialist economics may start struggle with addressing market failures such as public goods and externalities without any market mechanism like it's not like always the market keeps running with the a uh, proper uh, without any disturbance or some, sometimes it might fail market might fail which might affect everything so might lead to misallocation of resources yes like when a single body does everything uh, sometimes what happens is they might miss allocate resources for a particular uh, uh, industry and uh, give other industry the more resources which it might not even require so this might happen into the socialist economies next comes mixed economy in this type of economy both private and public sectors coexist and work together towards economic development but it combines the advantages of both capitalism and socialism example india and japan so we'll let's look into the features it's owned by both private and public sectors property and means of production are owned by private and public sectors 
however the state has the ultimate role in uh, controlling how much freedom the private sector has so the public sector is held by public sector industries are held by um, the nation or whatever it may be particularly the strategically important uh, industries for nations interest such as in uh, railways uh, atomic energy these things are all held by the public sector while profit making can be allowed by the private sector also next merits so mixed economics economics provide for great flexibility as advantages of public and private sector work together which helps in tackling the economic condition and social needs so it gives us the advantage like when you compare the i mean when you combine the advantages of both uh, capitalism and socialism it gives a great flexibility can provide stable economic environment yes because they combine market mechanisms with the government intervention which can also help in tackling the risks and uncertainties of the business cycle so since government and uh, private sector work together where the private sector works in a, uh, bringing the product while the public sector uh, works in uh mitigating the risks or tackling the risks which uh, which might come at any point of time in the economy next is i can promote balanced growth as uh, and it can provide a sustainable and equitable growth which can be shared widely across the society so taxation is progressive of course india uh, we uh, india india's taxation is a progressive one as we all know like A, a particular percentage of income is set to be to be paid as tax uh in with respect to taxation like every every bra- um every set target we cross every person every set target for example if it is 10% for 5 lakhs and the next target is set for 15% for 50 lakhs so something like that the, the more un, the more amount you earn the more tax you pay this is something the profit benefit of merits of the mixed economy now looking into the demerits it's very difficult for coordination because private sector works for profit and public sector works for uh, private sector works for profit and public sector works for the welfare program so the coordination becomes difficult widening inequality both private sector and public sector are work on different part because of which uh, the inequality in income or whatever maybe might increase but still it can be reduced uh, through welfare programs which is not possible in capitalism may lead to bureaucratic inefficiencies so government intervention in a project might lead to bureaucratic inefficiencies as the com- as the situation becomes complex and and mm, sl- bureaucratic in the operations so hope you guys understood the different approaches to study the political uh, economic i mean different approaches to study economics now let us look into the different consensus so there are three different consensus about beijing washington consensus beijing consensus and the santiago consensus so let's look into one by one so beijing consensus refers to the policies followed by deng xiaoping of china since 1978 which again was propagated by cooper remo in 2004 so it speaks about the state being the dominant player as seen in socialism the three main pillars are constant experiments and innovation peaceful distributive growth with gradual reforms self determination inclusive of selective foreign ideas like if you have a good foreign idea bring it in and uh, we c- it is experimented every time some experts on the other hand have proclaimed that uh 
the death of market has occurred and with the slowdown of economic growth economics recommend caution in following this blindly model blindly yes of course this is true the thing is we have seen that in the recent past in the recent um, scenario the slowdown of econo- uh, chinese economy has occurred um because of which the economics suggests that following this model blindly is not recommended and uh, certain precautions must be taken into consideration and yeah again criticism is what worked for china in the earlier periods might not work for all other countries uh, some blame for the rise of protectionism and reduced globalization on countries that are tilted towards the beijing consensus to witness rapid growth yes like this is something we must look into this rise of protectionism and reduced globalization is something that it is not only seen in beijing consensus or only in china uh, recently in the former us president donald trump's period the rise of protectionism occurred where uh, high tariffs are put on Im- imports and uh, that impacted the american society as well as the other countries which had trade with uh, united states so now let us look into the washington consensus so this policy was suggested by imf world bank and the un treasury us treasury department where it recommended the structural reforms to increase the role of market forces in exchange for help like if you go to you and if a country goes to the united world bank or united states or imf for some um for some loan or what it may be like they structure recommend the structural reforms which bring in uh, the role of market forces that is private property into the consideration a 10 point policy prescription fiscal discipline to avoid fiscal deficit redirecting public expenditure to increase in economic activity tax reforms uh, financial liberalization adoption of single competitive exchange rate trade liberalization for more uh, fdis to pour in elimination of barriers to foreign direct investments privatization of state owned enterprises a few state enter- owned enterprises works of uh, privatization few state owned enterprises works deregulation of market entry and competition like uh, making the entry and exit uh, making the entry into the market should be easy and securing the property rights in back it leads to the process of lpg uh, and countries get the reduced role of state in economic affairs and role of private sector increases yes this happened in the lpg scenario of india and during the economic crisis of 1991 when india went to the world bank and imf for loans so they st- uh, suggested structural reforms and because of which india had its economy open uh, and it played a vital role in transforming india from an op- closed economy to open economy and uh, that brought in liberalization privatization and globalization however it also has limitations free trade is advantage only to the countries where the domestic industries can compete with other industries otherwise they will suffer so this another part is that privatization before the basic social needs are fulfilled can leave a nation with little consumers and deter income or deter investors as their income levels are low so this can be seen in bolivia which privatized its water industry under the pressure of imf and as a result what happened was many could not even afford water so that's why it said a privatization before social needs are fulfilled can lead a leave a nation with little consumers you do not have consumers for water because you don't have money private private will come came in and increase the price of water which uh, affected the people in bolivia next is san diego consensus so it is considered as an alternative to the washington consensus for developing countries and was recommended by then world bank president president james 
olfaction so actually what it says is santiago consensus not only focuses on the economic aspect but also on the social aspect so it enabled the government to focus on socio economic development and inclusive growth which is clearly seen in the india indian scenario so the world bank world bank proposed apart from financial had it also try, wanted to harness the best global practices and information technology which can suit the local condition and improve the economic as well as uh, social status of the people so this is something india is following this concept of socio economic development is something which is india is following for a very long time so so hope you guys understood the different consensus beijing santiago and washington consensus so now let us look into the different schools of economics mercantilism yes it emphasizes to promote the nation's prosperity and power through restrictive trade practices whose goal was to use exports to increase gold and silver reserves like what they do is like they always wanted to increase exports through which they can earn in more money so the main aim, aim is to increase the domestic employment so it is seen in it was seen in during the colonial phase where uh, it was set to protect business interest of producers and merchants like english east india camel as we all have read the import tariffs to the uk were very high but the same tariffs exported to india were very very low or almost very very low or almost nil so this is something mercantilism works in it next is behavioral economics behavioral economics is an interdisciplinary field which incorporates insights from different disciplines to analyze and influence the economic behavior so we are, should all know about that it brought in a concept called nudge units which bring a desirable change in the behavior of people and where those units can have both impact on macroeconomics and microeconomics uh it uses can be like bringing better adherence to tax laws cleanliness volunteer social work etc like a good example can be cited in behavioral economics is a swachh bharat mission where which where it was emphasized on the cleanliness cleanliness uh, as an adj unit and because of which it influenced both the macroeconomic scenario and the microeconomic scenario in the part, in the aspect of cleanliness so and again beti bachao beti padao moment uh, this is something Uh, behavioral economics teaches about um, where a single component or particular uh, policy influencing both macro and microeconomics so next is the green economics so it's a school of economics which th- uh, emphasizes the importance of sustainable and environmentally friendly practices so um it critically addresses the critical issue of balancing the economic growth along with environmental preservation aiming for a harmonious coexistence between humans and nature so in india we have had a growth which is not economically or something which has not been sustainable example green revolution uh cost land degradation of water scarcity in many parts of country of course it increases the fruit production level but at the same time it cost land degradation due to over usage of fertilizers and the water scarcity due to again use over usage of water water uh which cost uh, damaged many many parts of the country so different bodies and governments on the later phase came with their indices or to reports index to measure the green economy such as the green gdp social progress index and environmental performance index to learn more about the green economics so it is nothing but giving importance to sustainable and environmentally friendly practice and at the same time developing the economy of the nation that's what green economics speaks about next is health economics 
So health economics is an applied field of study which allows for systematic and rigorous examination of all the problems and promoting health for all. So it covers in the areas, areas such as health indicators, preventive and curative measures, budgetary allocation for health, medical research and education. So we should know that health economists study the healthcare system and those behavior that affect health like example smoking and drinking. It's simple that. So it shows that how health affects an economy. Like when more people in an economy smoke, it causes lung. Eventually it puts more strain on the economy uh, of the healthcare sector which in turn puts more strain into the national economy. So it economists study these things, these things and uh, try to explain the problems. So on the another part we should know that India more focuses on the curative measures rather than preventive measures. So this is something also we should all know about. So, so this is for today's lecture. So in next lecture we will be learning about the different sectors of economy um, on three different types such as basis of economic activity, basis of work condition, basis of assets, trade-offs, opportunity cost and other stuff. So hope you guys understood today's concept. Do like, share, subscribe and channel in the video. Do comment your doubts and we will reply as soon as possible. Thank you guys. Keep supporting and we will come back with another topic soon. Thank you. Bye.